Well, good morning, folks. It is a Wednesday morning, and no, I'm not uh, playing hockey from work. It's just it's a rain day at work for me. I got an outside project to do, so it's uh, it's a good excuse to come to the boat. Anyways, uh, the other good excuse is that it's eight degrees Celsius out, which is 43, 44, 45 Fahrenheit for our American friends, and so it's uh, it's warm. So, it, you know, relatively warm, so I am going to get cracking on the winterizing aboard Boogaboo. Um, just doing a little experiment here. You can probably tell that I'm not holding the camera. I'm just trying to make it steady. It just got it setting on the, um, on the dashboard of the truck. And, uh, yeah, just heading to the marina, heading to the boat. And I'm going to get going on that. I don't know if the boat's out of the water yet. I'm hoping that it's not because if it is, I'm going to be going up and down the ladder all day. So uh, I'm hoping that it's still down in the water in the slip. And uh, that'll make my job a little bit easier. And uh, if it is, you'll get to see what it looks like up in the air before I expected that it would happen. If not, we'll just go around the corner here. Hopefully the camera don't dip over on me. Um... Uh, if it's um, if it's still in the water, it would hopefully be up in the air in the slip by the end of the week. Like I say, it's Wednesday, so I anticipate coming back either late Friday just to finish up or Saturday. And both days are supposed to be sunny and warm again, warmish. So I will get some shots of that and uh, show what it looks like. But um, yeah, so let's let's see what it looks like. I'll see you on board. Okay, good news is that we are still floating in the water, and so that's going to make my job a lot easier today. Just want to say how low the water level is, but this is normal for this time of year. So, uh, we're used throughout the summer to boarding from the swim platform, stepping down off the dock. Our dock is the same height, but now we can just step, or at least I can, because Anchor Girl's not here right off the dock onto the side of the boat. So I've got the water draining, the last little bit of water is draining out of the fresh water tank. I gotta get rid of all this carpet and that. I started taking it out last week and already the stuff on the stairs, the carpet's gone. Get rid of this, tables, chairs. Up on the bridge we have carpet up here as well it just snaps in so I gotta pull those seats out I just stare, uh, store storm up there and then um, pull this carpet roll it up take it downstairs and after I do all the winterizing and the uh, mechanicals uh, next thing I gotta do is take the electronics off and stow them inside so they're nice and warm protected for the winter so I'm gonna get at it Okay, that's just about it for today. Coming to you live from my engine compartment next to these big 454s. Yes, John Ahern, gas-powered 454 engines on this beautiful boat. Um, I had a good day. I was able to get both of the engines winterized. The big uh, 9,000 watt generator, at that is done. I did the two air conditioning units. We got... Uh, uh, 16,000 BTU in the main salon plus we have another 12,000 in the forward V-berth which handles the two staterooms and the two washrooms. Those are done. What the hell else did I do? Oh yeah, I um, drained the water system, the fresh water system and did the bypass for the hot water tank so the water tank's drained so now all I gotta do is run the air, uh, sorry run the antifreeze through the water system and through the pipes and everything else. So I will be coming back in a couple of days. Again, today's Wednesday. I'll, I hope to come back either Friday or Saturday. It's definitely going to be one of those two days. Uh, depends on my schedule. And um, hey, we might even be out of the water by that point in time. And of course, I will share shots of that with you. That's going to be just minutes, so don't go away. It's all going to be part of this video. Uh, hopefully, I might even get a chance to film the boys lifting one of the boats out of the water, even if it's not ours. 
simply because I had somebody um, from uh, a Florida viewer who asked if uh, how how they lift the boats like what's under the boat right now um, just water <laughs> uh, but they do put slings under and uh, block and tackle system so like I say I hope to be able to uh, capture that in person and show it to you so stand by it's just gonna be seconds away but two days for me through the magic of video in the interweb we are going back to the future! Well, good morning again. It is Sunday, uh, the week of. Uh, last time I was talking to you was Wednesday morning when I was uh, at the boat doing the major uh, bulk of the winterizing. And I didn't have a chance to come back up since. So here we are Sunday. It's uh, supposed to be sunny. It's just starting to be uh, clearing up right now, which is not too bad. 10 degrees Celsius, again in around eh, 48, 50 degrees Fahrenheit, which is pretty good for the time of the year being the end of uh, October, the last week of October. And as I am driving northward towards Boogaboo, um, I come to the stark realization that all of a sudden it's fall out. Yeah, I know. Okay, stupid. Hello, it's the end of October, it's fall, but you know what I mean? It's just all of a sudden it really looks like fall probably the way the clouds are in the sky today uh, but not only that um, I would say probably 50% of the leaves if not more are off the trees the ones that lose the leaves in the winter the uh, the conifers no not the conifers the deciduous trees sorry let me just back up into my grade 8 science class or whatever the hell <laughs> wherever that came from but yeah the uh, deciduous that's right so because conifers are fir trees, like Christmas trees, spruce trees and such, the ones that have needles. And they uh, keep their needles on year round. So anyways, <laughs> as always, I'm getting way off subject here. What I was gonna say, or just continue with my uh, original line of thought was that yeah, all of a sudden it, it's fall and before you know it next week is going to be november of course the clocks change again so it's going to be light or sorry dark out by just after five o'clock and i you know what kids i absolutely dread this time of year you know boats out of the water trees are coming bare getting colder uh, i saw the first little bit of ice on a puddle on Friday morning, which is not a good sign. Snow is going to be coming. It's going to be cold again soon. And winters in this part of the world are no fun at all. So, for all of the above, it just seems to be all of a sudden this is coming upon us. Um, I think a lot of that also has to do with the fact that uh, spring and the launch of the boat and getting squared away in our marina and our, and our uh, permanent slip, so to speak, was, shit, middle of June before we finally got settled away and had the water running in the marina, blah, blah, blah. Again, no fault of the uh, marina operator, just the shambles of the marina that they inherited. So it was, you know, I was just, I was actually just looking at some old photos over the weekend and... Um, going back to the early 2000s we have been launched uh, generally by the beginning beginning or middle of April and this year wasn't until May 6th so that was a late start again not till June till we finally got middle of June till we got to our permanent slip and so all of the above there was not a transition you know from spring into summer it was just boom all of a sudden summer showed up and it seemed to show up kind of late and then there was uh, the summer just blows by too fast so bottom line what I'm saying is the summer has just gone way too fast fall is here way too early and the boats out of the water now for the next six months and that sucks so anyways whatever it is what it is right it's just that the older I get uh, the seasons just seem to be winter's way too long summer's way too short and I know I've said it before and yes we are working towards still 
uh, being able to go south, namely Florida, for an extended period of time, more and more as we uh, move forward. And on that note, we are, um, we have put our house up for sale again, because uh, it didn't sell last time around. Long story short, it's back on the market. So we will be downsizing, but we're going to be moving to uh, an area which is going to be more conducive and a, and a property that's more conducive to what we want. We don't want uh, to have to take care of property, mow the lawn, shell the snow or anything like that. And we want to be able to have the freedom to leave the place and not worry about it. So we are looking into a uh, condo type of affair. Uh, downsizing from our house but still going to have uh, some very comfortable and again not have to worry about maintenance or anything else like that we will have our work cut out for us initially because we're going to do a bunch of renovations but I'm putting the uh, cart before the horse so to speak right now because like I said we just listed the house only been on the market for two weeks now and uh, the properties that we're looking at um, you know, who knows if uh, if one of them? They, we, there's two particular units that we're looking at, and uh, of course, it remains to be seen if they're going to be available when our house sells. So, because we're not going to put an offer in on anything else until our uh, house that we currently have sells. And um, so, we are looking forward to that. Um, if that all comes together, which we're confident it will, that's going to take up you know a little bit of uh, time. Uh, over these next few months to, to do the work that we want to do. Of course, when we're in there, I'm going to be uh, anxious to show you uh, what we're going to be doing and the location and the setting because it's, it's really nice. And um, so that, of course, is going to impact on our uh, the time that we're going to be spending down south. I'm still hoping to be, you know, a month, month and a half at least away. But again, it all depends on the timing and how things are going to work out for us. So we will be heading south for sure. Exactly when, we don't know. Exactly where, we don't know. And exactly for how long, couldn't tell you at this point in time. As long as possible. Because, just rewind, I hate the winter and the summer year. So, anyways, back on track to what's happening today is uh, I'm going to the boat and uh, finish off the rest of the winterizing and I'm going to uh, show you what it looks like um, as far as I know the boat is still floating still in the water uh, so I will see you when we get there came okay, on a little bit of a rough stretch of road here but I just want to make mention I saw a bunch of wild turkeys off into the distance I don't know if they're like turkeys or grouse or pheasants or whatever they are but there's along the stretch there's a, a gaggle of them. There's a whole number of them that we see throughout the year. And they're stupid birds because if, if they start to cross the road, many times we've had to stop because they'll just stand there like a bunch of idiots. They have no clue what's going on. You gotta stop and honk the horn, then they'll all go, Wah! and they run like dummies. Anyways, I just saw a bunch off to the distance and it bring to mind, it bring to mind, a uh, situation last year it was uh, probably middle of November and we had just had the first snowfall and Anchor Girl and I were heading up to the boat just to check it out and uh, there was a school bus ahead of us and I think it was late on a Friday afternoon or whatever I don't know why we're so early during the week that a school bus would be running but anyways we uh, come around the corner and all of a sudden, because like I said, it had just snowed, so there was light, fluffy, fluffy snow on the ground. It was really cold out, <laughs> and so the school bus ahead of us was just you know white stuff blowing all around. And all of a sudden, man, we saw these turkeys just go <laughs> flying through the air. Well, again, they were too stupid to get out of the way. School bus wasn't going to slow down on a snowy road, so the bus driver, well, the bus just nailed them and killed at least a half a dozen. I mean. Like, we were like, whoa, I slowed down. Like, what the hell was that? And we see them just feathers flying and everything else. Um, it was pretty funny, actually. It's, I mean, it's sad to see the animals get killed, but it's just like, man, oh, man. So here's a couple of photos that I took. Uh, like, we weren't at the boat long, so when we left, we were coming back. I stopped, get a few shots of these. 
and I showed it to somebody on the following Monday that I work with, and he's like, oh man, why didn't you pick them up? Fresh turkey, hoo-hoo, would have been a great feast, but I'm not really into roadkill so much, so we just, we let them lie. Anyways, that's my somewhat amusing and somewhat sad story about the demise of these silly, goofy birds. Well, folks, that's it for 2015. All the winterizing is done. Both big engines, these 454 gas engines are done. The generator's done. The forward air conditioning, the salon air conditioning. What else do I do? We have a funky water filtration system, uh, which we didn't use this year. We didn't have to, but um, I did winterize the pump. Cleaned everything up in here. Uh, vacuumed out with shop vac. Everything's nice and dry and ready to go, good to go. Oh yeah, the other thing was I did the water system, uh, our fresh water system. I have a uh, kind of unique little bypass for the hot water tank. I just simply drain it and then uh, let that flood out and then hook up uh, the cold to the hot. Uh, so it's just as a loop on the cold line to the, the, to the hot water side. And so everything just uh, goes through there. I use uh, non-tox antifreeze. It's the simplest, easiest way to do it. And then just uh, put that through the system. So a few gallons of that and uh, we're good to go. Oh yeah, I cleaned out the strainers on the um, uh, the sea uh, strainers where the water comes in. Fresh water. So for the two engines and the AC. Uh, and the Jenny, of course. Clean those all out. Put them all back nice and dry. Clean. And uh, today, the last thing I did which just got rid of all the electronics off the hill. <laughs> it looks really bare up there. It looks like the boat's been raped of all of its electronics as there's nothing but holes. So uh, that is a sad state of affairs. But anyways, on the positive note, as you can see, on my faded Flor Fort Lauderdale, Florida shirt, we are still looking forward, as I mentioned earlier, to heading back to Florida at some point soon. Uh, hopefully so, because this shirt is the only warm thing in here. It's starting to get cold. I'm leaning on the uh, exhaust risers, and my hands are getting cold. So I'll just stand here looking like I'm real important or something. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, that's it. At least the sun did come out today, as you can see in the background. It's nice and bright and sunny. Wind's really picked up, though. Uh, I hope that's not going to blow in anything bad, because I am working outside for the next couple of weeks. Hoo-ha. So hopefully the weather stays and yeah i think that's about it um yeah oh i'm gonna let you know also i did look at the port side shifter if you look at my sit back sunday videos there's a lot of uh, 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 periodically so i think i got that all figured out i was gonna uh lube it up throw some lithium grease on it but of course everything's packed away and buried with tables and summer stuff so i said the hell with it i'll do it in the spring i promise uh, what else did I look it up there? Oh, I got to mount my VHF radio a little bit more securely. It was done really quickly five years ago, and it was one of those things. Well, yeah, next year I'll do it. Next year I'll do it. Never did. So I hope to do that then at that time because I'll be working in the same vicinity uh, up on the helm. And that's about it. I have one more trip to do uh, to come back here once the boat is lifted out of the water. I got to just come back and open up the Seacocks because they're closed now. Because um, I've done all the winterizing, and uh, what I gotta do is just open those up just so that those lines drain away. And there's one, two, three, four. So that'll be quick, and yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, the last time I'm gonna say that's it. Um, and at that time, I'll show you what the boat looks like up in the air, sitting on the beams. Because again, I had somebody in uh, Florida was asking me how the heck they lift this boat up, and how that all works and it's really simple and cool and that's all part of the winterizing deal uh, again we're in a covered slip so I'm happy about that at least for the most part we'll be out of the weather uh, apart from the cold and um, yeah winter what can I say it sucks so that's what Florida was invented for so until the next time I'm gonna bid you adieu 
I uh, hope I showed you what you wanted to see. Uh, sorry again that I didn't do any winterizing how-tos, uh, simply because there's too many interweb experts out there, and I don't want to do something wrong. And they'll, oh, that's not the way you do it, because I've had my fill of people like that on uh, on YouTube, to, to be frank. Um, so... It seems to me uh, the people who have the loudest, uh, most negative opinions have zero of their own content up there. So I tried to pay them no mind, but whatever. Um, I'm satisfied with the winterizing. I've been doing it for the last five years on this boat and never had an issue, and it all works for me. So we're very happy about that, and it saves a couple, three thousand dollars with what the marina wants to do, it, uh, believe it or not. So happy with that. Happy with the fact that I can do it myself and that I do. and. Uh, that's all. So, again, from the 2015 on-water boating experience, because we are still floating, um, cheers again. I look forward to your comments and uh, hopefully positive ones, and I'll see you next time around. Cheers.